Behind me is my 2001 Porsche 911 Carrera 4 of the 996 generation, and it has recently undergone some serious transformations. About five months ago, we pulled the engine out of this car and did a bottom up engine rebuild, converting this engine from being 3.4 liters up to 3.8 liters, thanks to Ellen Engineering's wonderful Nikasil lined cylinder liners. In addition, we beefed up a lot of the other internal items as well, making this thing, in my opinion, the beefiest, most reliable M96 powered Porsche on the planet. Big claim, I know. In the last video, we took this thing on its maiden voyage and it went swimmingly. It was immediately apparent that this thing was much spicier than the 3.4 liter displacement engine that originally came in this car. The amount of torque! And we started clipping away at some of the initial break-in mileage. We've got about 230 miles on this engine so far, which means that it's time to drop out that initial break-in oil. So we're gonna do that and then give this car a very solid once over because it'll be the first time that this car has been in the air since doing its initial drives and going all back together from being completely apart. So we'll check to make sure that all systems are functioning correctly and everything is good to go and we'll give that oil a close analysis to make sure that everything internally is looking good as well. And then maybe towards the end of the video, we'll venture into some uncharted territory that we have yet to get into with this engine. You're definitely not gonna wanna miss that. So with that, thank you so much for tuning into Fun Ahead TV. Let's get right into it. Alrighty, now, heareth, weeth, goeth. Last little drive that we're gonna do here on this break-in oil. Currently there is 218 miles exactly on the break-in oil. We just crossed over 111,000 miles on this chassis. Pretty cool. I originally said I wanted to do 300 miles on this oil. I have since decided I think 200 is more than sufficient. Um, considering how much we were, you know, beating on it within reason, within this 200 miles. I mean, it's just it's just more driving than what it sounds like on the, on the surface. Um, plus the fact that inherently when you're breaking in an engine, the first starts of that engine and with break-in oil, it, it just it just causes so much uh, metal to end up in that oil inherently. That's just an inherent part of the process. And I just don't love the idea of continuing to run that metal and circulate it throughout the engine over and over and over again. I kind of just want to drop the oil, refresh it, and get uh, the next batch of oil up in it, with which we are going to still run it for an abbreviated amount of time, probably only about a thousand miles. Um, but at least that will open the door uh, to being able to you know, run it up to redline. Of course, they do say that you can run the engine up to redline with your break-in oil once you've done the initial break-in drives. But again, in my mind, it's like, I just don't wanna do that last couple thousand RPMs with that little bit of metal in the oil. You know, and I know the, the oil filter, you know, counts for a lot. It does a lot of things, but you just still, the fact that it's just still floating around your engine does not give me warm fuzzies inside. So by the end of this drive, we will have put about 230-ish miles on this oil. I think that is more than sufficient uh, for operation with this break-in oil. So the point of this drive is to get this break-in oil really nice and warmed up so that we can do a very nice, thorough drain on the oil when we drop it out. You don't want that stuff to be coming out like honey. A lot of it just stays inside the engine at the end of the day. Alrighty, well, as you can see, we've got the old gal up in the air. Let's just uh, go ahead and do a quick underbody inspection really quickly because I actually have not done that yet uh, since, well, getting the car back on the road. Right off the bat, everything seems to look really good. Uh, there's no coolant dripping at any of our hose joints here. Nothing weird, which is very good to see. Um, let's see. Oh, I did notice this right here. There is some oil right there at the bottom of this bolt. Um, and that is coming up from that spark plug tube right there. Uh, kind of weird because that's actually a brand new spark plug tube. So I'm not sure why that's leaking. Uh, and then also this bolt right there seems to be leaking as well. And I think that's actually just coming from the bolt. That'll be an easy reseal. And then um, the spark plug tube, well, we'll see. Uh, it's just odd because yeah, like I said, that's a, that's a brand new tube. Transmission wise, everything looks really good. Like I said, I left the undercovers off here just to look for any leaks, uh, anything weird. And so far I see nothing weird. Uh, looking at our repair here, as you can see, well, it still looks really good. Dang, that is a, that's a beautiful weld. 
<laughs> I am so thrilled with the way that that turned out. Uh, it looks just super good. And obviously it's holding tight after, you know, 230 miles. I have no reason to believe that it's not going to continue holding tight. Um, our one little coolant leak that was up there uh, does look like it had a little bit of a weep at one point. It's really, really hard to get the camera up there to see what's going on, but it's up there. There's that little plate. So it does seem like it had like a tiny little weep, but I have not seen any drips underneath the car at all. At this point though, if it just continues to, to not drip at all, then to me, it's not worth dropping all of the coolant out just to replace that gasket. But I did order the coolant. I have it on hand for eventually when we do go to replace it or need to replace it. I think what happened there was, so that plate obviously has bolts in the top left and bottom right corners. Since I was using the old gasket, I thought to myself, I'm gonna actually just over torque this a little bit. I over torqued it by a couple uh, Newton meters. And I think what had happened was it, it torqued down the corners and then lifted up the other two corners that aren't bolted down. And once I noticed the leak, I retorqued it to the proper torque setting. And when it did that, my guess is it, it dropped those two corners back down and allowed them to seal. So, okay, so what else? No, I think everything else looks really, really good here. I'm not seeing anything concerning whatsoever. Um, solid solid result to this inspection, I would say. So with that, let's go ahead and get this oil dropped out of there. I'm not looking forward to, to what this is gonna look like. This is gonna be... Mm. But that's the way the break-in oil is. You just have to mentally prepare yourself for that. So let's go ahead and do it. All righty. Pro tip, by the way, if you've never changed the oil in any kind of Porsche, They've got way more oil than you think. The drain hole in the sump is quite large and it evacuates all of the oil within a short amount of time. So it's essential to get an open top drain pan. Not like I'm a pro, just saying it's a tip. Well, it looks good. I mean, it looks clean. I don't see any massive chunks coming out yet. So that's always a good sign, I suppose. See, still really clear, so that's a good sign. Okay, well, I'm just gonna go ahead and let this drain for a little while, and I'm gonna pop the filter out too, and we will reconvene in a second here. All right, everybody, well, let's take a look at where we're at. So, after a little bit of time, we got the engine completely drained. I did go ahead and let that just do a very, very, very thorough drain. While it was draining, I did go ahead and throw our undercovers on, as you can see. And then lastly, I did check our uh, transmission fluid level as well. Figured mine as well, since, you know, it's the first time being under the car after having the nose cone off and all of the fluid out of it. Figured we'd just go ahead and be thorough and double check our fluid level there. So, all good news on the bottom side of the car, with the exception of our little spark plug tube leak, but you know, that's not a big deal. We can just go ahead and fix that uh, at a later time. So let's go ahead and move to the top side of the car now and start filling this puppy with oil. All right, y'all, now it is officially time to start filling this puppy back up with some engine oil, which brings us to our sponsor for today, and that is Redline Oil. I've been using this stuff for years and years on all of my cars. It is literally the best stuff to possibly put into your engine. And of course, in this case, this is a very extensive, very expensive rebuild that I just did to my 911. And I'm choosing to put this exact oil in it. I would be putting this in there even if they were not sponsoring the channel. So let me tell you a little bit about Redline. Basically, the gist is they've got a lot more ZDDP in their oils than what traditional off-the-shelf engine oils have. It is essentially racing oil for the streets. And they do make racing oil. So if you want actual focused racing oil, well, you can get that from them as well. But in this case, this is the stuff that you can go ahead and use on the street. It's got all the normal detergents that street engine oils have in it to keep your engine running really good for thousands of miles, but also has so many more lubrication properties than what other engine oils have, including elevated levels of ZDDP and molybdenum, great for flat tappet engines, great for just really any kind of engine. But fortunately, even though it has higher ZDDP, it is still safe for catalytic converters which is a huge plus because a lot of engine oils that are higher in ZDDP are not safe for catalytic converters given that your engine always burns just a little bit of engine oil. So do me a favor, head on over to their website, redlineoil.com, check out what all they have to offer. They've got a ton of different products, you guys. Anything and everything that you could possibly need for your car, they've got it and it is the 
top-notch product. So thank you so much, Redline, for sponsoring today's video. Let's get back to filling this thing up so we can drive it. Now I'm putting in 5W50 weight motor oil. Uh, this particular engine oil is certified. Uh, it does have the Porsche certifications, the Porsche A40 certification. Um, but as many of you probably know, Porsche has forever recommended 0W40 for these engines. There's been a couple other weights as well, but 0W40 has kind of been the, the regardless of operating temperature, uh, ambient operating temperature, that's the weight you want to run. I've always run 5W50 in my cars because when you look at the manual, it does say you can run up to 5W50 depending on the uh, climate you are running your car in. And in my case, I never run this thing in the winter. So therefore I don't care to have the thinner spec oil. I just think it does that much better of a job of protecting your engine uh, in higher heat, higher operating temperature uh, conditions, namely track conditions. And in the case of this engine, we clearance this entire engine to run at least 5W50 weight engine oil. Potentially, depending on what kind of oil pressures we're seeing with this uh, oil, we may run up to 60 weight on the track. So we'll see. But that's just kind of the fun thing about building your own engine. We literally tolerance this thing to be just a little bit more open uh, to make it basically more track focused. Uh, and in this case, you know, depending on what kind of pressures we're going to see, we may or may not bump it up in weight just a little bit. Okay, well, I ended up putting about nine quarts in her actually, and then it showed on the dipsticks. So let's go ahead and fire it up really quick, get the oil circulated up, up throughout the engine. Uh, and then inevitably, just like with the very, very first start of this engine, uh, we will need to kind of let the oil get back up in the cylinder heads, check the oil level again, and almost certainly add some back up to uh, get it right up to the proper level. We're not gonna have oil pressure for the first second here, but okay, boom. Yep, you can see the car is acknowledging that we have good oil level. It's fired up. Okay, no oil pressure, no oil pressure. There's the oil pressure. It was honestly kind of a weird start. I don't know why I just did that. Probably just because of the lack of oil pressure. Maybe the valve train was being weird. Not really sure what happened there, but either way, we're sounding fine now. Now that the oil has gotten up into the cylinder heads, we will go ahead and shut the engine off and let the uh, oil just kind of settle back into the sump and then check the level in, I don't know, maybe 20 minutes or so and then top it up. All righty, here we are, everybody. Back in the whip, just putting some more break-in miles on her, but this time with our brand new Redline 5W50 engine oil in the engine. This is the oil that we're going to be running um, from here on out, most likely. Uh, I'm not gonna run any form of break-in oil anymore. Again, as I mentioned in the last video, this is a fairly controversial topic. A lot of people will be like, you need to run some sort of a conventional for miles and miles and miles, and then exactly 12.1 hours of runtime, and then switch to full synthetic. But you can't do it a second or a mile before that. But I will tell you what, we certainly did a really good thing by running that Redline 40 weight break-in oil for, you know, we did 230 miles with it, and that certainly did a lot of good things. There was like a super fine, like finer than fine glitter that was suspended all throughout the oil, which again is completely normal. It was hard to show on cameras. I tried to film it and I it didn't really, I decided to just kind of not show it. But as I had mentioned, you get metal in break-in oil during break-in. That's just inherently part of it. You're breaking in the rings and the cylinder walls with one another. As long as everything's running right, you don't get like actual metal like slivers. What you do get is very, 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 very fine metal glitter, which I saw and that is a very good sign and indication that things are breaking in nicely in the old girl back there. But again, that's a reason why I wanted to get that oil out of the engine as much as possible or quickly as possible because that stuff is so fine that it honestly continues to just recirculate. Your filter's not catching that. And she'll continue to break in with the full synthetic 5W50 engine oil anyway. No problem, I don't have any concerns there, but we did the majority of the break in during that initial 230 miles. Now, why am I talking about all this? Why does this matter? Well, like I mentioned, we now have the actual oil in there and I, I pulled out the oil to, to get rid of a lot of those initial break-in uh, uh, metal amounts in the oil. I am now comfortable with putting the engine up to redline some. I'm not gonna do it much, but some. So this will be the very first time 
that we are actually taking this thing up to Redline, and I'm excited. I'm itching, and I'm excited to just see what happens. I mean, obviously, I know what's going to happen. We're going to go up to Redline, uh, but as far as what it feels like, well, that's completely uncharted territory. I mean, all I know is up to about 5,200 RPMs with this engine is absolutely bonkers compared to what it used to be with the 3.4 liter. I can't wait to see that last 2,000 RPMs and just feel what this engine feels like when we ring it out completely. So right now, I'm just warming everything up. We're warming this brand new engine oil up uh, and just putting, getting a few more miles under our belt before I actually do this red line. So I'm gonna continue to do that for the next little bit here and we'll pick back up once it's time to do that first red line pull. A few minutes later. All right, here we go. As long as this guy doesn't screw up my thing. We're getting on the highway for the very first time, trying to do this red line pull in a legal fashion. All right, here we go. Here's the first red line, everybody. Oh my gosh, this thing is such an absolute animal. Holy crap. <laughs> you guys, I am so in love with this freaking car. Oh my gosh. And unfortunately, I'm getting on the highway at right around rush hour. Uh, so it's pretty inherently kind of busy. Yeah, I flipped the old AC on. That's what's great. This thing is a freaking track monster, engine wise, of course. Suspension wise, it's still very civilian. But I can just jump on the highway and flip my air conditioning on. That's what's freaking great about a Porsche great on the road, super freaking comfortable, or I could take it on the track. Porsches are fantastic. So that first red line pool, oh, I got to tell you guys, that was, that was refreshing. You know, that was very refreshing to do and very satisfying to just actually feel this engine all the way up at red line for the very first time. Um, and it's as I don't want to say jaw dropping because it's not like it's like an insane super duper jaw dropping car but you just get that like feeling of like confidence with the accelerator pedal so much more already this thing was a fast car and you could jump up to 80 85 miles an hour really quickly if you wanted to now it's just like oh you want 85 miles an hour how about 120 like this thing is just that much of an animal i don't know if that makes sense but that's kind of like just my my thoughts on the matter my Italian hands are coming back. I, I do one red line pull with my Italian hands. Oh, <laughs> they back. Stop it. Anyway, that's going to be pretty much it for this video, you guys. I just wanted to go ahead and, you know, do our inspection, change out our oil, get the actual oil in there. And then I've been eagerly awaiting doing a red line pull. I did not want to do it on that break in oil. I'm not going to do that many red line pulls because we're still in the break in period. I want to do about another 1,000 miles on this oil that we just put in it. And then we can really start beating on it consistently. I, you know, we could do some some intermittent red lines here and there and, and uh, not feel too bad about it. But anyway, guys, she's running and she's running great. And I could not be more freaking thrilled about where we're at with this engine right now. Man, what a progression. We went from a couple weeks ago breaking our transmission and thinking that things just weren't going to be going our way to here we are doing red line pulls in it. And we are chugging full speed ahead through getting all of our break-in miles done as quickly as possible so that we can just start taking this thing to the track, beating up some curvy roads, and just having the best possible time. So thank you all so much for tuning into Fun Ahead TV. I really appreciate each and every one of you for being here. Yes, you, I'm looking right at you. And I will see you all, hopefully, in the next video. See ya. Oh, hey everyone, just a quick reminder, super high quality Fun Ahead TV merch is available on funaheadtv.com right now. So head on over to funaheadtv.com and get yourself some today. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. Also, thanks so much for watching that video. If you wanna see even more great Fun Ahead TV content, please click the link right here. I'll see you over there.